Shit. Okay, so. Gold Planar. We've had a couple of them in the past. GL2000s I fucking love. My pair is spectacular. Other people's pairs, well, we're working on it. Don't worry. I'm gathering numbers and things. Then there was a GL850. So the Gold Planar GL2000 is a Planar, which gold planar then the gl850 was an amt which was a, the uh, accordion that squeezed and pushed air out and i didn't think that was exceptional so i sold out in the yard sale but now we're here with the gl1200 so 2000 cheapest 850 most expensive 1200 1400 dollars so the gemstone goes to 1200 it's 1400 dollars and it's a ribbon headphone and i don't know how to describe that the only uh, and it's just like the gl850 where there's only one other example in the history of the fucking world of a big amt headphone and that was the headphone and now the 1200 comes out and it's a ribbon tweeter headphone which means it's completely different in build and design and mechanics than any other headphone except for the raw requisite and the raw requisite's like $3,500. And this is $14. So that's less than half price. So let's get to the review, right? Um, there's mechanical differences that even I don't grasp. I could probably get schooled for like three hours. Someone could just explain it to me. But all you got to know is it's different. At least it's different in the way it's delivering sound. Um, you need a speaker amplifier for these headphones. The uh, headphones come with a detachable three and a half millimeter cable. They come with, you know, a normal standard four pin XLR on a really nice wire. The wire is, you know, uh, it actually has a couple like twists in it that could probably be worked out if you do this a bunch, but it's got, you know, multiple eight, eight nylon ropes, basically fabric. It's real nice. The headphones themselves are fucking giant. I can't understate the giant like that is. That is a giant headphone, and you look ridiculous wearing them, and that's fine because you still look better than you do wearing the raw requisites. Um, but you get the headphones, the wire, and this converter box, which I have since decorated. And inside of this, because I know you're going to want to know, and I wanted to know, is this mass of stuff, which looks like two giant ribbon, not ribbon, um, resistor, not ladders. Is that a ladder? But it's just stacks of resistors and then a mysterious black box and then exposed copper, which we don't touch. No, no touch. No touch because it's insulated. But it's... And then that's getting fed on the back of it. Oh, Jesus God. Through these cables, which came with the headphones, by the way. So you don't have to buy anything except for the amplifier. Came with these massive, like, I don't know, 12 gauge uh, banana plugged wires that go into these speaker terminals on the back of the converter box. And it says, what, six ohm total load, 150 watt max. By the way, look at the thickness of the walls. Did anyone notice the walls of this are like a centimeter thick? That's right. I switched to the metric system for at least that particular second. By the way, Zeos, link to the 100 pack of anime waifu stickers you got on Amazon for like $7. They come in so handy. So this box is job. With the, with the cover on it, is to accept, I'm using the Pioneer VSX D1S amplifier. I will link a couple crowns, and that if I can still get to that bear dynamic, I'll link a couple, not bear dynamic, um, Behringer. I'll link to a couple amplifiers, because here's the problem. You're not just buying a headphone. It's like when you buy stacks, and stacks are sort of put behind this, not paywall, but like, oh, you want a stacks headphone. Well, that means you need a stacks energizer for electrostats. So you got to go and get a whole different thing. So most people are not just sitting around at their desk, kicking around an extra 100 watt per channel, in this case, vintage Japanese amplifier, which is what you need to feed this with a 0.2 ohm load to get it to convert so it can run these fucking headphones, which can you see the box in there? The raw requisites, which link in the description again, if you want to look at them, um, are just this little ribbon fin with like weird carbon fiber. 
and it looks bizarre and it hangs off your head and I've never reviewed them. I want to review a set so bad. But when I do, I'm going to have to compare them against this. Because in this paper wrapped box, under this, I love how the pads are attached by the way, with Velcro. Welcome to the future, everybody. Behind this very thin piece of paper and the Velcro, which we can't take off, there is just the, the gentlest sight of a ribbon. Now, a ribbon tweeter is different than like an AMT, which is different than like a, a normal tweeter and a speaker. This is like a RAL, R-A-A-L, the one who makes the competition to this, make nothing but speaker tweeters, like for speakers. And they're very fucking expensive. And so no one would think in their right mind to take the, the tweeter out of a speaker and then put it out against your ear. But it works for AMT a little bit. And it works really well for something like this. Uh, what's actually happening inside this box? I don't know. All I know is this box prevents that amplifier from seeing a 0.2 ohm load and blowing up. You can't just plug this normal headphone connector into a normal headphone amp and get these to work. It just won't work. Shit. No, not just me screaming shit. Like S-C-H-I-I-T. Actually make a very specific headphone amplifier that runs the raw requisites. And it would probably work to run this as well. Um, two different pairs of pads. You've got a, a, that's a four knuckle, right? You got a perfect, perfect four knuckle pad in either, uh, perforated pleather. It's not real leather. It's very soft. It's also not, it's not memory foam. It's like a gel foam. You could feel it. It's like cool. It's like a cooling gel perforated foam or a very, very, very soft, uh, probably the same material as that, but you don't tell the cooling, like super bouncy uh, suede or velour, velour, probably gonna go with velour. Uh, onto these massive fuck off headphones that there's there's like a door up here, right? And there's like a little, little hole. And I'm pretty sure you can like extract the driver. I know the raw records that say that you could do that. And I got a piece of paper with this unit but it's all Chinese, so I have no idea what that means, but it's like arrows, and, and there's there's what the ribbon looks like. That's what we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very thin, narrow strip down the center of this. We'll just throw that on the floor while I'm sorting it. Um, here's the information panel that came with the headphones. 90 dB per watt, which is very low, if that's what that actually means. N52 magnets, 15 to 40,000 hertz, uh, 530 grams, which is not bad, actually. They're, they're actually not as heavy as they look. They look like they're going to be heavier. Here's the instructional diagram, amp, 4 ohms at 100 watts, um, GL1200 IC, boom, boom, boom. Uh, let me hear you say, way -o. Way -o. Um, So none of that's in English, and I don't think it's ever going to be. And I could tell you right off the bat, with the stock, the pads it comes with are these, and the pads it comes with are these. I prefer the slightly softer sounding ones because we have to get into sound immediately. Like, all right, did you get the build? Did you get, did you get this, this box with those magic innards that do things? So you need an amplifier. You need a good, clean amplifier. And it's going to run it through all these fucking resistors, and it's going to give it to you in a usable form. Um, I'm currently actually running the Sonkaz SGD-1 directly into the power amp of that Pioneer. So we're not using the preamp on it at all. I'm just controlling the volume with this. And um, it sounds kind of like a more harsh Orpheus. I was going to say it sounds like the Orpheus. Like, do you know what the Orpheus is? The Sennheiser HE1? No, I'm talking about the new one. Everyone, When you say Orpheus, people think you're talking about the one from the 90s. I never heard the one from the 90s. I heard the new one. And I know that that's a bullshit fucking statement to make. But, and, but here's the thing. When you hear the HE1, the Sennheiser $50,000 electrostatic headphone, you know it's special. Whether that's from just the delivery method or because it's using like warm amps in the, you just put it on and you go, oh God. Oh, that's why this is $50,000. At least in my case, I was like, oh, that's why this is fucking different. Now they did it in a very, very weird room. I didn't have a selection of music. They played the exact same tracks. I have some of those tracks and I played them. And the thing that these headphones do is they don't sound like a delivery method from any other headphone. The, the big, the GL850s, the ones that were AMTs, 
they just sounded kind of like a warm planar. And the GL2000 sound like the best planar. At least my set sounds like the best planar. And then the GL850 sound like a warm, muffled, a little bit muffled planar. And I could tell you, because I had these up on my desk, I have a whole other one of those amplifiers that bought on eBay, which got fucked up by FedEx. Fuck you, FedEx. Um, somewhere along the line, FedEx employee just took like a rebar thing, and went smash, and fucked the whole top of it up. So my little, my little fuck you to FedEx is going out here. Um, a whole another one of those vintage Japanese 130 watt per channel amplifiers upstairs, running that on a DAC. I was running this whole setup, and I had the Singer on my GL 2000s, which is my favorite fucking planer. Like I, you go back to watch my GL 2000 video, I fucking jack it to it. And when I went back and forth from this to the GL 2000s. After listening to this for a while, the GL2000 sounded dull. So I'm going to put that little like, fucking thought. Like, how, do, how does a headphone... I get it. You're buzzing. I get it. How does a headphone do this? What is this? I, I'll, I'll try to... I'll put the, put the pads back on. Oh, be careful when you put the pads on, because I thought there was build quality issues, because it was getting squeaky. But it turns out... Um, Right there, there's the little the, the pivot that this turns on, which doesn't go flat in either direction, which kind of sucks. Build is great. It's the same as the GL2000, same as the 850. This is metal. This is, is this metal or plastic? I think that's metal. This nice, big, soft, coffee thing. But if you put the pad too high, it squeaks against the pivot point, and you get quickly, 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 and you say you don't do that. So when you put this on, just, just bias it a little bit below that. Or she hits, and then it'll be like, why is my headphone squeaking that I just paid $1,400 fucking dollars for? Do that. Okay. By the way, Velcro, can we agree that if you're going to do multiple swapping, extremely, like, unique pads, which these are. I don't know of any other headphone that has giant four-knuckle four square pads. Velcro is the way to go. Especially if you're going to make someone else change it out. So uh, we're indicated right and left here on the wire or in here on the inside. I could tell you what, and everyone who's tried these and the Rawls can say this. These are way more comfortable. They just go on like a headphone. And they don't feel like as massive as they are. They feel better to me than HD-800s. HD-800s to me are a very round D shape. And they touch parts of my face that I don't like. And these don't touch parts of my face that I don't like. They just, my ear has perfect space to swim around in the, the I can't believe it's four knuckles. I didn't even try that. So, Yoko Kano, female version, female vocal version of Rain from the Cowboy Bebop, a limited edition soundtrack. Hold on. Pink Floyd, good place to start. Actually, Amber Rubarth was the, um, Here's the thing. I listen to Amber Rubarth a lot. Rubar. If you have your foobar set up correctly, you should just be able to type and it'll just bring you to whatever artist. So let's just open any of them up. Okay. Um, these fucking headphones. You got the build, you got the thing, you know, the price, you know that they have uh, quality control for other headphones, but I'm going to consider these as I have to wipe the slate clean and give these a review based not on what I think gold planer, because, because gold planer, uh, holy fuck you fuck. Let them quote that and put it on the website. Um, because these don't have a sound signature. And as a headphone reviewer who's done, if you go to my my uh, Patreon and you go and you sign in and you look up the tag headphone, 226, I think, is the amount of headphone reviews I've done. And every headphone has a signature. Some of them are aiming for neutrality. Some of them are just bass cans. Some of them have very good highs, width, dark. And I was confused by these for a good long fucking while because I was playing them and I'm like, all right, what are these? And then I sat in dead silence. I don't know what they are. They are sound delivery mechanisms that when you put 100 watts, and that's what, we're, we're nearly maxed out on the song. I can max out the Sonkaz DAC fully. There's maxed out fully. 
So that's 130 watts per channel going into this, which is 150 watt maximum into this on a nice quiet song like Ruber, Amber Rhubarb, so you know we got a headroom and it's not gonna blow up and then just go. I, I just, it's, I don't. By the way, um, mouse pads, mouse pad, different one. Um, link that in the description, see those mousepads.com. They haven't sponsored me, but I'm like, look, just send me the mouse pads, you'll get sales. Everyone likes mouse pads. Um, these motherfuckers push sound. Do, do you remember my review of the LCD4? Those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time will know that um, the $4,000 set of LCD4s, I didn't like. I gave them kind of, I gave them like a review, but I understood what they are. They were put on and then you got hammered with sound. Holy shit, it's happening. And then, you know, after 20 minutes or so, uh, my ears were just exhausted. Like I was running up the fucking Rocky steps for, for fucking 20 minutes. And then just like, oh fuck, I can't. And these kind of remind me of those. So any $1,400 headphone that reminds you of like a $4,000 headphone, you're like, oh, so they sound like LCD4s. No. Because LCD4s were exhausting from the, like the, the detail and the treble. And these don't really exhaust you. But when you take them off, you have a relief. Like it feels like you've, you've been wearing an entire fucking 30-person orchestra on you. I've never experienced sound that the Amber Rubarth, one of the reasons I went to the uh, sessions from the 17th Ward, I think that's on Spotify, and Zeos will be a great guy in the future, and he'll link to that Spotify album, even though you should really get it in flax somewhere, because fuck, um, until Hi-Fi Spotify's out, and then I can get an affiliate link of that? Can I do that? Um, doesn't matter which track, because uh, it's recorded very well. That album is recorded insanely well. By the way, Wallpaper, a little toned down because I think the one in the sound demo is a lot more. Um, but that's One Punch Man. Punching from the... That's one... That's, that's Saitama. Just fucking my ear my ear holes. That's what that... Put that there. Uh, so Amber Worth, Novocaine, or whatever track you want to listen to, there's background noise. And when you do a like live recording or in a, in a space, you set up the microphones... And you say, okay, go, and you hit record. And whatever sounds are in the background of a microphone, a lot of times uh, they'll use mastering techniques to just push them away. So you only hear the instrument, you only hear the vocalists. And I know that that particular album, on every headphone and speaker, because you listen to it, it's amazing, um, doesn't filter those things out. So you hear like cars outside, and you hear like echo, and someone sneaking around in the background. But I've never felt the presence of the room like like breathing at me like, like i can't even fake it like being next to like 20 inch subwoofers right here that are just slowly rumbling at me because the environment where that microphone was it dictates that's what it should sound like it's like they're completely non-existent a little a little bit harsh if you push them real fucking hard, but at the same time, completely, like the word transparent didn't make any sense to me in a lot of headphones. A lot of people talk to you about the Abyss headphones, those are transparent, but, but these motherfuckers. Every, every little sound, every little minor dictation of, of placement is exaggerated to the point of every other headphone sounds like shit. It's one of those. It's one of those fucking headphones. And you're all going to go, but Zeus, I don't want to. And I'm going to be, look, I, that's why I decided to do this review today. Because there's literally, there's no amount of preparing or extra testing or that I can do to push this shit. Zeus, you love everything. Fuck Yeah. When everything sounds great, if something is like meh, then I'm like eh. I know someone will out there will buy. What is the worst product I reviewed? Does anyone know? I want to take uh, a toll. What's the worst product I reviewed? I guarantee you, someone who watched the review of me shitting on a product still bought it. Was it those flat panel speakers? Remember those things? Those things were horrible. Someone still bought it. 
So there's always someone who wants to buy a product, no matter how fucking bad it is. So I always try to like find the good in it at least. And these have destroyed me in a, in a of course it's, it's one of those, I, I don't want to make this review because I know everyone in the comments is going to call me a shill. And oh, Zio, you're just going to shill these things because you think they're great. But I can't deny what the fuck I'm hearing. That's what you fucking follow me for. That's what patrons pay me for. If a patron who's spending money to support me buys a product I like and then gets it and it doesn't match anywhere near, then that person stops supporting me and they go away. So it makes goddamn financial and fiscal sense to be as honest on this channel as possible. And I sit here listening to Amber Rubarth. Pick, just pick one. Oh! The sound demo for this. I did the sound demo before I did this because I wanted to make sure I could reference it now. Right now. This moment. I did this a week ago so I could reference it now. Um, I had to leave them open. And I had to lower the low end because the low end was just freaking out the microphones. And then I put the low end back up as much as I thought it needed in post. And so the sound demo for these is fucking silly. And you know what? It sounds that silly in real life. If you're using a $30 pair of KPH 30 eyes, listen to the sound demo for these $1,400 ribbon. Ah, ah. They sound better than that because real life. Oh, I hit the thing. Hold on. I hit another thing. Hold on. I'm fine. It's, you know, when someone takes a bottle cap, like a Snapple cap, and they, they bend it until it goes kick, kick, and it like pops in your ear, and they fucking do that. And I remember that in school. I don't know if they still do that. Fucking assholes do that. Where it's like you get this sound by your ear, and they pop, and you're like, ah, these headphones do that. But you want them to. It's the weirdest. It's the these are masochistically good, because every sound, and you could ask people, "Zeus, what about the sound?" Terms like soundstage and imaging and bass response, none of those apply to these fucking things. All right, they just don't, because nothing sounds like any other headphone I could ever compare it against. So I'd have to think of new fucking names, like um, musical swiftness. The musical swiftness is high on the GL 1200s. Mm -hmm. um, there is an ambrosia around the bass that you just can't beat. Th these will be on my desk, my actual everyday living desk, for as long as they function. You're it till you're dead or till I find something better. That's that's the motto of Z Reviews and Z Reviews Desk. So you're it till you're dead or till you find something better. And I'm, I don't use them all the time. That's the thing. I sit there and I look at them and I go, fuck, do I want to, do I want to subjugate myself to listening to these fucking things? Is there something, my music's not worthy. My whole library is unworthy of being played on these fucking things. That's fucked up. That's a fucked up thought, but I would sit there and go, I'm going to do, I'm going to watch this YouTube video. Do I want to use my speakers that are just on, or do I want to actually put the, nah, I don't want to put the gold. Gold planner is not, they're not fucking worthy of it. The fucking, the, the, the music, the video I'm watching is not worthy. Doug Tamiro's fucking uh, can't sell me cars and bids hard enough with the, to need me to use these. It, it's so strange. It's so strange. It's like you have a gold deagle that costs $8,000 and you fire it and it's gonna melt because it's made of gold. So you're like waiting, you you have this fucking special gun, special abilities bullet, but you don't ever use it because you don't wanna waste it. That makes this whole life, all my life is now that because these things, there's like five albums on my entire list that if someone borrowed, someone took these and put them on their head and was like, hey, I wanna hear these. I'd be like, all right, hold on, let me go specifically to this song. Okay, but now we got to go exactly to this part because that's the only part that's good enough recording quality to to, to be used by these. Because you listen to everything with them. That's, you know, I'm sort of exaggerating a bit where it's like a, you listen to everything. But some music, you just, like ACDC, you got to keep turning it down because it's like, oh man, ACDC is not recorded well. I can hear everything that's going on. Everything that, everything, you could hear the brain of the audio engineer. Not even what he said. Just what he was thinking about doing. And yes, I'm shilling the 
fuck out of these because the the five people, this video is going to get 15,000 views in two days. Five people will buy it. Five people will watch and go, I'm, I'm doing this, Eos. And I implore you, five people, come back here and tell me what you think because I've only tried it on like two amplifiers and they were both vintage Japanese. So I don't know what you have at home. I don't know what it's going to do when you hook it up to, you know, a Denon receiver from like 2014. I, what are you going to power with it? If you bought this, what amplifier would you get? Because it needs no fuck 100 watts. That's 130. And I have a, it gets a little bit too loud at maximum. So all these fucking resistors in here are there to protect this unit. They're either here to protect the amplifier from the headphones or the headphones from the amplifier. Take your pick. And they're doing a good job. It's just that you need so much. Like I was thinking, all right, I'll hook it up to, to this 130 watts per channel and maybe the volume be at 50%. 50. No, 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 no. 90. 90%. All of it. Like you could see the ring is going all the way around the Son Kazdak, which is what's power, which is what's feeding these. Listen, you, you, you. it's doing this thing where it's like the fucking phasing just from spinning it around. It isn't just, you know, open headphones that comes out the back. It's there's a cancellation effect of doing this where the sound like does that. Like, I don't understand these fucking headphones. All right. I would love to get the raw requisites because people are like, oh, I like, I like the rolls more. How? Just for a. Uh, if you are so fucking bored with headphones and you have the ability to pick up an amplifier, buy these. You could try them with the stock pads, the, the original pads, I would say, because they're all stock. These take everything that I'm saying and make it hurt to actually hear the detail. These are more LCD four level pads. These soften everything. So even with everything I'm saying, that is the softened version of it. And I don't know... People always ask me, what's the best gaming headphones, Eos? Go spend $1,400 plus several hundred dollars on a good speaker amplifier. And then there you go. This is the best gaming set. And the imaging is, because that's like the only thing that I, I can actually like judge compared to all. The imaging is, is still like microscopically detailed. Like in placement, placement, placement's the word. Oh shit. Thank God I had that up real loud and I hit next track and it was like, oh, you want to play Claymore OSD? That would have been bad. Brain damage, perfect. It actually actually accidentally clicked it to the good part. Hold on. Wait, is this? Oh, I'm like, is this a vinyl rip? Because I have a vinyl rip downloaded. And I know it's a vinyl rip. Because every pop and crack and crackle and fucking wave, you can't listen to vinyl with this. You'd puke. The imperfections would be so blatant that you just go, oh, and fall over like you've got seasickness. Let's try another one. That's like, oh my God, Static X, no. But yes. Ooh, Daniel Pemberton into the catacombs from the dark crystal age of resistance. There's just, I, these do environmental surround, like just better than, than any other thing. Like these beat stacks. All right. How fucking is that? How's that? How the fuck is that? These beat stacks in many, many, many ways. Uh, I'm trying to think which, like, w like what level, like 009s. I did the 009s and the best stacks. I it took me, it took me a bit to figure that out, but I love them. And I think these are more impressive than those immediately. You can't take it back because I don't edit. So that's because I'm sitting here and I have all my stacks. I could hook them up to anything I want. I'm like, oh my god, this is great. But these do what stacks do, but with an intensity that stacks cannot handle that. With with a volume, with a fucking a massiveness that is just incapable of being done with any of the electrostats I've ever heard. 
And I think that's why Raw started it with the requisites because they're like, hey, we could do this. Because it's it's unlike the AMT, which was just like a dull, it just felt. This does not have, and I'll say this again from the beginning, it doesn't have a signature. There is no sound signature. It's just sound. The end. It's just a, pre it is an oppressive amount of detail all the time and you had better be able to fucking handle it and power it. Like, j j the, the, uh, uh, hold on, whoop this up. Like the, the wires, I have a business card that I keep from, just look at these wires. They don't need to be this thick. They don't need to be this thick, but they're this thick. And it's kind of got my brain in a, in a fizzle because I'm like, that is a lot of actual current that is being pushed into a box that hopefully works so that the little wires here that go to the thing don't make my fucking brain melt. Ow, I just hit my leg on the chair. That sucked. Don't, don't buy them. Watch this video, don't buy them. Wait. Go to the Hi-Fi Guides forums where there'll be a post about these and wait for other people to talk about them. Because I am I was actually considering, because I, I know my reputation precedes me. As Zeos loves everything, and Zeos will shill fucking anything. Um, and I only shill good things for reasons I've explained earlier. But I actually considered just having like multiple people hear these, sending them out to different reviewers. Like literally don't release this review. Just send it to DMS, send it to Joshua Valor, set, bring my friends in who have listened to her, quarantine them in the corner of the fucking thing. I'm like, all right, listen to these now. Because I'm one madman in my basement. And that's a big responsibility for one of me to get, get $1,400 out of you. And then also require you to do all this weird shit with amps and DAX and things. But these are worth that sort of effort. These will be up on my desk. They'll never come off. Um, the nice thing, you, th there is a nice thing. This is inert. There's no power to this. It just takes speaker cables in and gives you that. And you don't have to use the cables it came with. You could just use standard speaker cables. So you could have an amplifier 40 feet away. Run speaker cable to this box and put this box somewhere on your desk or under your desk or here. Which, oh, it weighs a fucking, it weighs a metric fuck ton because of those sides. So, I mean, there's ways to get this thing integrated into your life, but it's so complicated. Some people are watching this right now that maybe would be considering it, but they're like, but I, I don't want to go out and look for like an amplifier and then I need to fucking control the amplifier. So you're, you're just not buying it automatically. But the, but the people who are going to buy it, the people who are actually considering it, because of the words, the powerful words that come out of my mouth that make people's wallets disintegrate, just know you find a, at least one more person to, to back you up. Because I, I, again, I only have one pair of these headphones. When I get a, a headphone from a company, I have to assume the headphone I got is the headphone you're all going to get. And the GL2000s was that review where I went fucking nuts. And then everyone sat down and some people didn't get the headphone I got. In fact, everybody got different fucking pads than the ones I got. And no one told me about this. So I'm like, what the fuck? And they're like, oh, I don't know. We just order them from the company. And they, so I'm like, what the fuck, Gold Planner? And Gold Planner doesn't listen to me. Linsoul is the one who just hits the button and a bunch of them come in and fly out to people's door. So they didn't know. So everyone's like, hmm. So I only have one pair. Maybe this is the greatest pair of these that's ever been made. And there'll never be one that matches it. That's quality control for you. But I'm pretty sure... Because of the weirdness of this headphone, I actually have more faith in it than I do a standard planar, which has like tension on the thing and the way the magnets are, are there a good, are the magnets all the, there, there are other factors in this that I make me believe that quality control should be an issue. Number one, I think they're going to sell um, one 500th of these as they do the GL2000. So they could probably literally hand make every one of them and check them because they ain't going to sell that many. This is too much fucking hassle for most people. But if they can pull it off, if everyone gets the headphone that I am looking at right now on their desk and they all can put together the, the, the amplification that is required for this and enjoy it the way I'm enjoying it, then everyone's happy. Then we've done good. Then there could be a GL 1201 next year that has, you know, more titanium case instead of the, the plastic one. 
Which, by the way, I do love the way this looks. Like, as big and stupid as this. This looks like a Sesame Street headphone that, like, Big Bird would wear. Because they got to make it real big for television to show it. So they make a giant Big Bird headphone. This is a Big Bird headphone. But um, the, the things it does with sound when, the sound, when the sound is right and everything else is working and you got the pads on and your ear is in the right spot of this, it doesn't change too bad. One of my concerns when you have a pad this big is that your ear is here versus here. Like it's literally a different part of the galaxy. But this ribbon is like longer than the pad is. So you're getting sound from this. I don't know how to describe it. Oh, fuck. I'll hurry up now. Um, you want to try the raw, these? You want to try these on? GL1200s? I'm selling the GL850s. They're, they're, they're going up for the art sale this month. Hi. Hi. I know. I just yell at myself. and, and the, the, See, the cat thinks I'm crazy because I'm just talking to the imaginary people on my head. So that's just her. Oh. The Frozen OST. I don't even like that movie. But everything sounds fucking good. Oh. Like this. Chesky Jazz, Chewbacca. Is specifically a test album for testing sound. And these are the headphones they were designed for. Like that. Look, look, baby, listen. I'll scare you away with the fucking detail. Um, I have to stop. There's no literally, there's nothing else I could tell you. It's one of those like. What was it like having sex with that three-headed alien? And I try to describe it, and you're all just like, ah, I don't get it. You don't get it. You'll never get it. This is sex with a three-headed alien. This is listening to a three-headed alien having sex. So all you could do is, is hope that other people get it, enough people get it, that maybe someone in your close-knit group will have it, and you could walk to their house and wear a, a fire suit and go listen to it. The detail... Queens of the fucking universe. And I I guess I could describe soundstage, sort of. Oh, ha, 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 I killed the battery. Um, I had a feeling I would talk a lot. I guess I talked more than I thought I'd talk. Anyway, real quick, uh, before I end this video, soundstage is N-A, N slash A, because it's just everywhere. But just it just doesn't have soundstage. It doesn't present sound in a way that you could just do that. It's just, it's so fucking weird. I'm done. Um, I will link to obviously these. Um, I'll still into the GL 2000s, even though, you know, caution in that until I know exactly what's going on. You know what? Don't link the GL 2000s. Yes. Hold off. Link to these, link to some amplifiers, um, uh, wallpaper, Saitama being just punching the shit out of something. That's what these have done to my brain. Uh, Patreon subscribe star. Support this channel. You get to see reviews like this early. You get to comment on them early. You get to participate in the yard sale, which is where the GL850s are currently. First to the 10th of every month, I have something, you know, company sends me something, and I'm like, I don't really like the GL850s. They're gone. Love the GL2000s and love the GL1200s. These will be here forever. Forever and fucking ever, ever. So those won't be in the yard sale. But other things, uh, portal players and... Daps and tube amps and DACs and amps and DAC, amp, tube speakers sometimes. Um, someone was complaining that I don't do enough subwoofer reviews. I only do subwoofer reviews when A, a subwoofer is a sent to me usually, or enough people are like, you got to do this subwoofer that I'll purchase it, then do a subwoofer review. But those are like once a month. Um, but yeah, yard sales first and tenth of every month. C reviews are early for $5 a month. For $10 a month, which is like... That's enough to feed a starving child in Africa for a year. But for $10 a month, you could also get in the behind the scenes private telegram chat of Zero Views, where I am, and I will give you audio advice on the fly. So any questions you have, I get it. Any questions you have will be answered. Boom, Telegram, by the way, fantastic program. Always updating. Love their voice chat thing now. Um, so yeah, so $5 a month, Zero Views early, yard sale, $10 a month. Behind the scenes private telegram chat with me and all the weird people who follow me. And we can all answer your questions, or you can answer your question. It's great. And then Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forums, which will have a discussion about this fucking thing. Hi, everyone at Hi-Fi Guides. How are you doing? Wonderful. Lovely to hear it. Do you like the forum? Do you need me to change anything? Color's good. Login problems? Okay, great. Um, 
Yeah, no, they'll they'll be here. They'll they'll be there, and they'll be have, have this discussion um, with the Velcro pads. Which now that I'm I'm pretty much sold on these, what do I do with these? How could I use these in some other capacity? Because I mean, they actually still have a lip, so there's a chance I could use them on another headphone. J just saying, if you ever wanted a four knuckle fucking pad to try on something, this is how you get it. Yeah, I'm done. I uh, sound demo in the description. I know that sound demo came out fucking gangbusters. And hopefully, even if it's half as good as it actually sounds through your headphone, that'll be 10 times better than you've ever heard whatever songs I picked. I forget what they were. Uh, so yeah, I'm done. Wallpaper, links, cat. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow.